Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ability here, and in this video we will be maging the entire Strength IOP set. And here's the set laid out here. It is a 12-6 IOP set. The range doesn't so much matter, and neither does the initiative, because the IOP will be the uh, player that I want to go last in the four-man team, so they will have the lowest initiative. And it is, if you include the percent power, it is a thousand two hundred and about forty um, strength, with eighty-four neutral damage and ninety-six earth damage. However, they have a hundred and eighty-one critical damage, which is what the set is based around. Um, so the critical hits are fifty-eight. That's a little bit lower than average, and that's because I went for the twelve AP with the boar hog. One option, if you did not need 12 AP, would be to use a snail mitt instead and gain the plus 15% critical chance. And then also with this set, I will be using multiple shields and weapons. So for example, I'll be also using the cat's eye bow in this set um, and a four leaf shield. So there are some swappable pieces in it and it needs two one percent exos an mp on the corruptions ring and an ap on the captain and comma a magna shield i always thought that was and comma wow the more you know so this is the set laid out and let's move into maging the first item So for this Captain Amacna shield, I decided to AP exo it, and that's because there's not a better mage that I could put on it. The only other option really is 100 vitality, but I didn't want that. This AP exo took 137 tries, which doesn't sound too awful, but it, it really was. It was terrible. So this is the 137th try, and it lands. This shield cost me over 50 million commas. Next item. So for this hammerature, I decided to go for a critical damage transcendence rune because this item does not naturally give critical damage and the crit damage transcendence runes are very powerful. So here I get hunting weapon on it and I get pretty decent stats, good enough for, you know, a PVM set. And I decide to transcendence rune at these stats once I double check everything, missing one earth damage, but there's no sync on it anyway, so that's that item, and we can move on to the next. So on this Bleeding Heart Amulet, I decided to go for a Spell Damage Exo Mage, and that is because the IOP is going to be wearing, at times, a melee set, and at other times, a range set. So Spell Damage makes the most sense. I get five tries. The fifth one lands, finally, and the AP crits back. Low wisdom, but next item. So on this corruption ring, I decide to put a second transcendence rune for eight critical damage, and that's because this item also does not give critical damage naturally, and that's a very powerful transcendence rune. So here I use the range sync to get a 100% perfect stats ring. The range crits back and I am double checking. I realize it's 100% perfect, but still I hesitate on putting the transcendence rune. This is just a habit of mine. I always hesitate. So the ring came out beautiful. I'm so happy with that one and we can move on to the next item. So for this cat's eye bow, I decided to use the 8 critical damage transcendence rune as well. It's especially effective on this bow because it has two lines of damage, meaning that the 8 damage will count twice. So before I transcendence rune this bow, I want to make sure to have hunting weapon on it. And the range has dropped, I have fixed it up and I still have a few tries at hunting weapon. The second one lands right there and I'm just going to check over the stats and make sure everything looks good. I managed to get the stats pretty decent with just the range drop, I even kept the pushback damage up, which I'm happy with. So now it's time to transcendence rune it. 
And that's the bow there, and we can move on to the next item. So now for this brand belt, I decided to do another spell damage exomage. And the spell damage exomages are a little bit difficult. I could use a transcendence room, but this is cheaper. The first one lands here, and the range crits back, and we can move on to the next item. So these boots of the bleeding heart are very special to me because these are the boots that I saved Aspen Sap on twice during the Almanax event. So I don't care how hard these are to mage, I will uh, never get mad at them. But here I actually crit the spell damage 1%, which is pretty lucky. Um, and the damages are all perfect, the range crits back, and we can now move on to the next item. So for this cape of the bleeding heart, I also want to put spell damage on it. And this cape is a lot more difficult than the other items to put spell damage on, and that's because it only has a summon for sync, and yet it has 15 neutral and earth damage and 10 critical damage, so there's a lot to worry about. So after a few hours, I decided I'll just transcendence rune it. It's a little over a million commas for a transcendence rune, but saves me a lot of time, and we can move on to the next item. So these Turtolonia horns are even more difficult to put spell damage on. I tried for a few hours to do it without a transcendence rune and it was slow going and painful so I decided let's use a transcendence rune. And here the stats are decent however I risk a paw strength and it doesn't land. But then I decide let's try again and it does land. This hat is extremely hard to get to good stats with perfect damage so I'm happy with it. I transcendence rune it there, and we can now move on to the last item. So for this corruption ring, I decided to put my MPXO on it, and that's because this ring has no source of sync, and it gives critical damage, so I could not use an 8 critical damage transcendence rune on it if I wanted to. So I go for MP on it instead. It took 65 tries, which isn't too bad. Um, I wanted to get perfect damage, but it's just too hard on this ring. And there the 65th rune lands, and that completes the strength IOP set. So now we're going to go to the Astrup Dojo and do a little bit of a damage test. Alright guys, I have the IOP here in the Astrup Dojo. And here we are going to do a damage test, but before I start the fight I will make note that I am not wearing the boar hog because I'm currently free to play on this character and I have not yet quested for the ebony dofus or the vulbus dofus so I'm missing an AP because I'm not wearing the boar hog and I'm missing an MP because I'm not wearing the um, vulbus so I was gonna go close combat here but let's actually switch it to range set since we're starting far away from this thing and then Let's see, what should we do turn one? Turn one, power, accumulation, weapon skill, and destructive sword once. And now turn two, we can do a cat's eye bow for 1900. And then let's see, that's three AP. We could put this next to him. Use, oh, I have Pygmasia, I didn't even realize. Uh, okay, well that still works. Pygmasia twice, and then a accumulation. No crit on accumulation, but that's alright. So let's see if we can get a high charge Pygmasia going. Um, I'm just gonna summon, how many cast per turn is this? Four. Okay, so we should be good with four. I'm just gonna wait for my um, power to come back up so we can do a full Pygmasia test and I think this does more damage not really sure ouch alright so now we can do a full Pygmasia charge here 900 1500 
and a 1500 as well. So that spell hits quite a lot. Get out of here, Chaffer. And um, let's do a quick test with Sword of Eye Up because that's the spell that I thought I had going into that. So turn one can be weapon skill, power, accumulation on myself, and then accumulation on the enemy for 1300. And then turn two, we can put this here, use Cat's Eye Bow for 1700 this time. And then we can do a Sword of Eye Up and accumulation. 1900 on the Sword of Eye Up, 1400 on the accumulation. Pretty strong. Uh, now we can do this. 1900, 1700, so huge damage there for the range set. And then also I have the close combat set, which I can take here. So let's see, what spell should we take? Fit of Rage sounds good. Accumulation Sword of Eye Up. Pressure. Yeah, I think that's all good. So let's see. We can do a power, weapon skill, fit of rage, charge one. And fit of rage has three charges. So now turn two, we can do the second charge of fit of rage. 1400, pretty strong. And then we can test a um, sort of eye op. No crit there, 1000. Amateur, no crit, shoot, no crits. Um, so here's the third charge of Fit of Rage. No crit, amateur, no crit. Wow, we're getting very unlucky here. 78%, come on now. Um, and then we can do a double concentration accumulation. No crits again, this is, we're gonna do that fight once more just because we got extremely unlucky there. So here we're gonna buff up on turn one and get our fit of rage stacking. So 1k first charge fit of rage, second turn, no crit, amateur 2k, that's pretty nice. Um, so let's see, accumulation versus two concentrations. Looks like two concentrations is the way to go. If as long as they crit, which, yeah, I think that was pretty good damage. So now here is a big damage turn. So 2,100 Hamature, Fit of Rage, 2k, and then we still have 7 AP, so we could do an Accumulation 1500, and then two 900 Concentrations, which is just unreal damage. And we still haven't yet to see Iop's Wrath, so let's give that a test real quick. So uncharged, should I do a buff? No, let's just do totally unbuffed, 2,200 it looks like. And now let's um, start buffing up for the turn where it comes off cooldown, which will be this turn here. And I'm just going to buff up my turquoise dofus. And here we get a nice fat wrath for 5,200. And then we have, I could precipitation and easily kill this, but I want to do a wrath amateur for two large numbers. So 5,200, 2,100. Always nice to see big numbers like that. So this IOP is a lot of fun so far. He has so much burst potential with a fit of rage, amateur, and of course Iops Wrath. And uh, I'm really excited to see how the team works with this Iop. So after finishing this strength Iop set, the only set left is the multi-element Iop set. And it is the last set that I have to mage before the team is complete and I can start questing. So I'm so excited for that. If you guys want to see that maging video, make sure to let me know. This has been Ability, and I'll catch you next time.